good time today. Yeah. And it's been awesome. I, uh, this is the last session, and uh, I, I want you to leave. I want you to leave energized, excited, and ready to take your bus ministry, your Sunday school apartment, to the next level, to the next, next dimension. I've learned today, this has been a learning process for me. And there's new things I've learned, and I'm going to take it back. I've done talk to one of our Sunday school workers and told them about some things we're just to change, we're just to work on. And the man, it's exciting. There is, there is great things in store for the Apostolic Pentecostal Sunday school bus ministry, kids men movement as a whole. And it's because of leaders just like you. Why don't you give yourselves a good hand? You guys are awesome. You know, you know,
so that they can become Christians. Yes. We've heard the statistics. Forty-three percent of our church population started as a kid. I've come to let somebody know it's time to find that child and train them up. Be a difference maker in your city. Be a difference maker in your community. Be a difference maker in your neighborhood. Train up a child. What you've got to do in this hour, in this day, is find that child and say, hey, I'm taking them under my wing. I was talking to your brother and sister Wilma just at lunch time today and begin to talk about the importance of taking these children under our wing, connecting them with our families, connecting them. I'm telling you, that's what's going to take. I didn't tell you all the whole entire story of the young black gentleman that I was talking about yesterday, but you know why he's preaching the gospel today? You know why he's growing in God? It was because a family took him in. They connected him with their kids and said, hey, we're going to make something out of you. We're just going to make something out of your life. Right? Every single month, 
And if you can't, then you need to pray till you can. Right. Right? So that something bothers you. God, nobody's got the Holy Ghost in my class. In over a month, God help me. Yes, sir. Right? That something stirs in you. Let it stir in you. Let it bother you. It's okay. It's a good thing, right? To pray. Not to worry, but to pray. Right? Until God changes your situation. But oftentimes that has to begin with a different expectation. What do you believe your ministry does? Do you believe you are really ministers of the gospel or not? Right? I'm challenging all of you. Really look at what you're doing as true ministry because it is. Right? You have just as much a part of saving souls as any other part of the church. What I challenge you also with is just like Brother Dwayne said, you know what? We've got keys that others actually don't have. Right? right? Again, I really believe that. That these kids are like little greyhounds all over the city saying, no, no, I'll let you win the city. I'll protect you as you win this part of the city. Because you care for me and nobody else would. Everybody else rejected me, but you care about me. I'll, let, I'll help you. I'll help you get into this apartment complex. Right? Literally sometimes. Sometimes literally. It's a gated apartment complex. But these little kids see us coming with balloons and they will open up that gate. Look how many cool. Can I have a dog? Right? Can I have a sword? Right? Like all these wonderful things. Kids are so hungry. Right? Because their hearts have not been hardened by the world yet. Right. What a wonderful opportunity we have. Do we hold what we're doing to be precious or not? Right? When you win the heart of a child, and when a child is filled with the Holy Ghost, you have saved a whole life, an entire life, right? right? I regularly try to remind my team, you know what? There is something so beautiful about what we do, because when we get it right, we have absolutely changed the face of our youth ministry. Yes, sir. Let us be the ones that our youth ministry team are so thankful for, because yeah. they can shift from constantly worrying about making sure the kids don't backslide. How do we find more things for these other teenagers to now be involved with and plug into our church? Because they've been so fired up as children, right? That's what we can do, right? We can be the ones that are having kids pray for in our classes. Do you see that? Do you believe that? Do you expect that? Right? It's not going to happen if you don't expect it. And it's not going to happen if you don't pray it into existence. That's going to take times when you come in on a Saturday night in your classroom and you are laid out on your floor crying out, God, I'm not asking for it for every single Sunday, but God, I want to know what that feels like to have some kids speaking in tongues every morning about the message of God. God, you just cry out, you cry out because it's hunger in you, right? Or it's just a few other people who are just crying, God. God, the altars have not, the altars have not been the way we need them to be, God. We need you here tomorrow, God. Are you praying the way someone who's about to minister to these children is praying? Are you praying? Right. Right? And if you are, what level are you praying at? That's the challenge. Will we raise our standard of expectation? of how God moves in every classroom, every street, every kid's church. Right. Because God wants to absolutely blow the doors off every single one of our churches. I know it. Yes, sir. Yeah. I know it through children's ministry. Right? Because as you've heard so many people talk about, you don't just win kids. You will win whole families because when the gospel works, it works. Right? Because those kids will change. And those kids will bring that stuff home because I have seen time when families are in crisis and it's that little kid that speaks a word from God into that home. An innocent little word. Mom, don't worry. Right? When mom is crying because she can't pay the bills, let's just pray right now. Right? As simple and innocent as that is, that is a beautiful moment where God is actually ministering through the hand of a little five-year-old that's, they don't even fully understand. They don't really know what bills even mean. They just know mama's really stressed right now. Right? But they heard their Sunday school teacher saying, you know what, whenever you don't know what to do, you just pray to God. You call on Jesus and he can help you. Whatever you need to do, whatever you need to do, 
do and they trust what that Sunday school teacher says to them and they apply it in their home. And you better believe that a prayer is of a little child that means it, means just as much. Yes, sir. Sometimes more, right? Because they show purity of their hearts, right? You know, when I think about raising the standard, I imagine a day that we have, we have really won so much in children's ministry, in the world of children's ministry, that we are developing prayer warriors at the age of eight. You know what? Because kids, kids may not have driver's licenses, but they have something we lack. Time. Oh, what I would give for more time in my day. But it seems like they have an infinite pool of time, right? But if we can pair with that infinite pool a genuine hunger yeah. for the things of God, right. right? Oh, their prayers matter. Their prayers matter, right? Can you imagine a day in the future when there really are classes of eight-year-olds who have caught a passion for prayer? Who feel that, right? You know when you have gotten into a place of intercessory prayer, I, I, I know for me, like there's times when I pray and I'm just calling out a certain street, and then I'll say, oh, it's like an undertone. You feel that in the spirit, right? What a blessing for children to learn that young. Not to wait until their 20s or their teens, but to know the power of working with God. Yeah. That is what I believe it means if we can just raise the, the bar of children's ministry well beyond. We're way past talking about babysitting. We're talking about really moving that bar, right? That they are full bona fide saints well before they're ever their teenagers, right? They're plugged into ministry. They're doing things. They're helping. They're carrying the load in prayer. That they're the ones that are ready, helping sometimes running the game for praying, God, anoint my game. If even my game can help somebody get to the altar, God, help me. Anoint me. Right? The kids are praying a genuine prayer of God, let me feel your anointing. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. That's where I believe children's ministry must go. Yes. We must go there. Well, God, God, let me be anointed. God, let them be anointed. God, don't just help me in prayer, help them in prayer. God, let them be powerful now. Because the pool of drugs will never be able to touch them once they've tasted the power of your anointing. this anointing God. Right. Right? right? That is what I believe is going to bulletproof our kids and that happens in children's ministry. And the torch is carried on in youth ministry yes, sir, yes. As, the, as the church just becomes this powerhouse. Right? Because these kids that have years of this put into their life and their core of who they are. Right. We build saints. Yes, sir. We build saints. Right? What do you see when you think about your children's ministry? I hope you think to yourself every day, I'm in the business of building saints, little saints, but they're saints. Yes, sir. Yeah. And they are going to do powerful things for God. Amen. Not Amen. years from now, yeah. right now. Yeah. Right? Anyone want to ask anything about any topic? It's kind of scary saying that. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are going to ask. Uh, anyone? Anyone want to ask any questions? Don't be shy. It's your last last chance. Anything. All right. Then I guess we can wrap it up then. Oh, okay. Unless they have any questions. Were there any leftover questions from what we had from the other night that we didn't get to cover? Oh, I got one. I got one. Actually, okay. You know what? Here's, here's one that's kind of interesting. Maybe you can sign off on this for the way. You know, in, in what we do, right, a core thing that we need to do is we need to build relationships with these kids, right? So that's that's a very core thing of what we do. Because, it, you know, I, I tell the team that I work with all the time that it's like, hey, you know, like, it's the relationship you build that's the credit that you're going to have when you say, hey, let's go up to the altar, right? No relationship. You're just a stranger asking them to go to an uncomfortable place if they're not feeling comfortable with it yet, right? Then that, that trust has to be there. But you know what? In that, the question is, what boundaries do you recommend are set so that it's healthy in how we're building our relationships with these kids? Are there certain boundaries that you recommend, you know, in a children's ministry that should be there? Uh, you, you will realize 
and, and children's ministry, some kids are going to cater to you. You know, there's kids that they, they enjoy me more than they would enjoy maybe another bus worker, Sunday school teacher. And so the boundaries there would be, you, you know you know the proper boundaries. And, and, and we, like I said, we've talked about this even a little bit at lunchtime. But if you have, if there's connections there, uh, for example, maybe friends of friends and there's, there's connections, then you, may, you might can take that to the next level. Um, and I believe it's important. Like I said, the young guy that I was preaching about last night that turned into a preacher, they had a son that was this boy's age. They connected the, the boy and the young bus kid that I was talking about. They connected. They ended up bringing him in, letting him live with him, just re, totally restructuring the way this boy thought. And, it, and, and today, he's a very successful, great young man. But it all started with their son. And a lot of times, our children kind of produce that connection with us. It can be a little bit awkward sometimes. You know, I believe it's important, but it can be a little awkward for for me to have a relationship with a 13, 14 year old as far as, and it would definitely, you know, need to be male and male and female and female relationship. You know, a 13 year old young man, my wife might be, she might be mentoring a 13 year old young lady, but it's the connection is a lot better if we have our children involved and help us connect us. And if we can get them involved with our kids, then hey, what's wrong with taking them to a youth camp? What's wrong with taking them, you know, taking them out to eat with us? And, and I'm not saying it can't be done otherwise. Uh, you would definitely, just like you need in Sunday school, you would need more supervision, I think, unless there was a family connection of some sort. Okay, yeah, you know, uh, I'll just throw out some, some things that might be helpful, rule of thumbs. Uh, if you're working with young people, right, like what Brother Gwen said, try to keep it male to male, female to female. Um, there's times that I will ask my wife or ask some other team member and say, hey, can you connect to this person? Somebody needs to connect to them. And we'll, we'll work with each other to build those kind of connections um, by just protecting ourselves, right? Um, one of the other things is, you know, with bus ministry, uh, many of you may be seeing situations I do where our team is young. They're very, very young. 75% of them aren't, are 18 years or younger. Probably the majority of that are 15 years old or younger, right? Uh, uh, an absolute rule is you do not date anyone. You don't pick up anyone or pick it up, right? Don't, don't be trying to pick up on anyone or pick it up, right? You know, like, it's like, that's a rule. No dating people that we're outreaching to, okay? Super no no, right? Um, sad, sad that we have to say, you know, like, it's like, but, you know, like, it's it's just good to have kind of like policies like that. Let's just make it really clear, right? Make it really clear. The other thing that I would mention is for young people, for everyone on the team, is a communication policy, okay? Imagine any message you are about to send if your pastor was looking over your shoulder, would you wince? Would you flinch a little? If you even would flinch a little, don't send a message, right? You know, like it's like, let that be like a quick guardrail for you to figure out, is this a good message to send, right? And if you can, make sure that, uh, you know, like for me, there's times that I'm communicating with young ladies um, that, you know, we're working with on different teams. I'll oftentimes try to have my wife with me or have a bunch of people together, right? So it's not just a one-on-one -on -one type of conversation. Those are just little things that over time that I think have, have been able to help, right? right? And being able to keep some safeguards. Group text. Yeah, yeah. I, I group text. If, if I will never, I will never, I mean, I just, I don't text these kids unless it's a group text. Unless it's a, a young teenage boy that I'm interviewing or something, yeah. you know, 16, I say young, 16, 17 years old. Yeah. Other than that, I include it because kids have cell phones now. So if you're wanting to reach out to a, a big group, I never text one-on-one. -on -one. I always have group texts with adults in the, in the group. And another thing is, is the mentoring, and you, you, you crossed it just a little, or mentioned it just a little bit, I, I'm always looking for people that may have common ground. They can, you know, I might be looking at that kid. There's great potential there. This seasoned kid here can really connect with them, and they could, they could form a good spiritual bond. 
And so I would go to that teenager, that kid, and say, hey, why don't you try to connect with her? Why don't you try to connect with him? Before you know it, they're living for a lot together. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piggyback on that, actually, real quick. On, you know, bus ministry and Sunday school may be how a kid and their family get introduced to the church, but that's not the end point. It's actually very exciting to partner with other ministries, right? A lot of times it's been bus ministry that first found a certain family, and then Spanish ministry comes alongside and starts to reach out and ask them to want a Bible study, right? And the whole family is one of God. I mentioned to some of you last night that there, you know, my wife and I sat down and we just wrote out, we wrote out 30 different names of people who were found through bus ministry, but the, the power of that was all other different ministries started to reach out and connect to them, to bring them into the church, to disciple them, to nurture them and everything else. It's an opportunity to partner, and I think like you were saying, Brother Dwayne, it's really powerful when you start to like, take them time and think about who else can connect to them? Who else can connect to them so that we can really do this as, as a ministerial team sport together? How do we really make sure that they feel the arms of the church wrapping around them, right? It doesn't have to be us. It can be other people in the church. Let's all work to bring them in, right, to make them part of the family. The only other thing I would say on boundaries is be very careful picking up anybody. Never one on one. Ever. Ever. No, there's just too many horror stories out there. Uh, always take someone with you, prefer someone over 18 to go pick them up, whether it's Sunday night church, Wednesday night, whatever. Never be one on one. And be very careful that a boundary is uh, getting too clingy with, you, with kids. Uh, you try to just hugs. You're going to get hugged. They're going to discharge you and hug you. You can't, whatever, you sip our rooms up. That's so what you have to do. But be careful. Right. It's a goofy world out there. These, these, you, you can get in trouble quick. Just be very, very cautious on how you are uh, touching the kids, holding them, whatever. Just be very cautious. It's, a, it's another world. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's the art of the A frame hug. You know, the. Yes, I right. If they're really side like, hugs, yeah, are awesome. Yeah, the side hug. But yeah. the best ever is the high five. Yes. You can never be a high five. You can you can deflect a hug with a high five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, that's actually a really good tip, right? Just it's good to be prepared because you don't want to be like, you know, like something like you know, you know, like, that's yeah. probably not a good relationship though. Probably not a good relationship with Alright, any questions about anything that just talked about anything at all. All right, we're going to go ahead and head to the very end. We're just going to do a quick accountability. They are passing around a piece of paper, a plain piece of paper for you to have. Does anybody not have one of those? Does anybody have not have a feedback form? If you do not, raise your hand, please. They have them. If you lost yours, if you made it into a paper, plain, whatever, they have more. Okay, well, it's all taken care of. We'd like to thank everybody once again. Thank you so much for coming, for spending this weekend learning all about the incredible stuff that we have. Thank you to our speakers, Brother Wayne, Brother Ozzel, Brother Fairley, Brother Bill, Brother Alex, uh, everybody in the public I hope I didn't miss anybody. Brother Lugos, uh, anybody else, uh, I hope I didn't miss anybody. But thank you, thank you, thank you, Sister Simpson, for your help on um, registration, Brother Joe, for cooking. They're pointing at somebody. Who are we pointing Brother at? Dylan. Brother Dylan! Brother Dylan! I am so sorry, Brother Dylan, for helping. <laughs> but thank you. There are uh, going to be recordings of every session going to be posted on HappenStalkSendingSchool.com and Next Level Kidman. It won't happen tomorrow because tomorrow's Sunday, right? I think we're all going to be a little bit busy tomorrow. And probably Monday will be some time. So by Tuesday, they will be up and you'll be able to... Uh, see anything that you may have missed in the meantime. We heard a lot of awesome things today. But just remember, children's ministry is always under the umbrella of your pastor. So anything that you take home, get excited, get fired up, but make sure you're okay with your pastor before you do anything, okay? These are good ideas, but they may not work within the environment that you are in. So just that's just the, the ultimate caveat. I hope everybody understands that. Just be careful. But accountability, everybody here, I hope you're fired up. Is anybody excited? Does anybody have some ideas that you're going to put in your home? <laughs> well, the funny thing about these kind of conferences, you have fired up, but if you don't write them down, 
There's something about it. You will leave those good intentions on the pew and go out and get something good to eat. And tomorrow you're going to get back in the routine. And next week you're back and you're going to forget those things that you are all fired up to do. So that's what that little piece of paper is for. We're going to spend a minute. We're going to write down three things that I am, not I want to, but I am going to do in the next 30 days. In the next month, you don't have to turn these in. These are for you to keep. Hang on to these. Keep them as a reminder. Put them on your mirror. Put them on your, uh, wherever you're going to see them. Put them in your car. And write down three things that I am going to change in my children's ministry in the next 30 days. But I'm really hoping that pretty soon you can get your team together. Because everybody's excited. You all have ideas. I know that's what we're going to do. I am, I am just I'm almost a wash of ideas. Like so many that I can't even, I don't even know how to implement them all at once. So we're going to have a meeting with our, with our Sunday school, with our bus, and try to get some ideas for everybody. How are we going to implement what we've heard about? I encourage you to do the same. Whatever it is, start breakfast at your church. Start a new bus route. Go get your commercial driver's license. Be creative. Whatever it is, make a note on your uh, on your paper and hang on to it. We're going to go home and we're going to try to change our state. If you think one person cannot make a difference, I'm just going to tell you a very quick story. Uh, Brother Tony Spell, when he uh, started their bus ministry, he had no backing of any kind in their church. He had no finances. He had no one behind him. It was basically him and his wife. And that was it. He said, I'm going to start a bus ministry. So he started literally pulling buses out from behind people's homes. He would drive by and see one in their backyard. He'd walk up and say, hey, uh, could I buy your bus? And they said, well, it hasn't ran for 20 years. If you can get it running, you can buy it from us. So he'd go back there. And this really happened. This is a pastor that is behind someone's house with a wrench trying to start this bus that hasn't started in 20 years. Finally did it roll. And finally a guy came out, the first one, they he said, if you get it started, you can have it. It sat there that long. And he got it started. And he got it rolling. He paid for the tires. And he paid for everything. He got that bus rolling. One of them he bought. And this is out of his own pocket. The church didn't pay nothing. He paid for it. He had to put a new engine in it because the engine blew. So he found an engine in somebody's backyard. And it was, of all things, a jet engine. It was somehow some funky engine. He said it got three miles a gallon and only ran on jet fuel. It was the loudest, noisiest bus. It didn't drive fast. It was just loud. And it was really obnoxious. But the kids loved it. I don't remember what they called it. It's a name for it. But one by one, he paid the insurance out of his own pocket. He paid the gas out of his own pocket. He drove. His wife drove. I mean, they had it going on. And he did it all himself. Until finally, the vision started spreading. And now they've got 14 brand new buses lined up that the church has now is now on because people got behind it when one man saw the vision and now picking up over 600 kids a week because one person got the vision. And that's the power that everybody here can take back to your church. You can make a difference. You don't have to wait for somebody else to do it. You can do it. So go ahead and fill those out. If you're missing any of the handouts from any of the sessions, uh, we're going to have those also on the website where you can download those so uh, I think there may be some on the registration table outside. But let's all stand to our feet. We're just going to thank God for an awesome day, yeah, an awesome night last night. Thank God. He's been so good to us. Is anyone thankful for what you've heard? Is anybody excited about taking us back to your show? I'm sitting in the hall of fame. Make sure you fill out your feedback for us. We have to have a feedback for us. We want to make this conference better next year. So if you can fill those out, put those on the registration table. Now we're going to pray and have an awesome, awesome Sunday tomorrow in all of our churches. Jesus, we love you today. Let your hand be upon every single church that is represented here, God. Touch every children's minister here, God. Every bus owner, every bus captain, every bus driver, every Sunday school teacher, every assistant, everybody that's involved in the is willing to put your hand upon them. Give us the passion, give us the burden, give us the honor.
see why. Go ahead and pick it up. We don't want the Red Lips Church to have to do a lot of cleanup if we can.